In this video, we're going to take a look at the at request param annotation, and we're going to do it with a live example in Spring Boot. We'll build the start of a universal search that can appear on the top of each one of our pages. At the moment, we only have one page, so we can go ahead and sketch out what our search is going to look like. And then in a future video, when we talk about templates, we can move this header to a template. So let's start at the top. And we'll make a simple form. In typical Spring Boot with timely fashion, we'll start with a form tag and we'll set the action to pound, but then we'll use the th action attribute, which we have pulled in that th library up on line number two. So th action. You notice I've set it to at symbol curly slash plants, which means we're going to have a new plants endpoint. Now, we want to think about our data model just a bit. A plant is something like a, a Fuji apple tree or a white pine tree. And then that can have many specimens, where a specimen is an actual white pine tree you can touch. And our concept of plant is just the concept of a white pine tree, and a specimen is a specific plant at a specific location. So when we're searching for plants, what we might see are the results of all of the specimens that belong to that plant. We have not created this functionality yet, we're just starting out on it right now. So if you're thinking, hey, wait a minute, there is no plants endpoint in the controller, you're right, but that's okay, we're going to build that in a series of videos. Let's use method equals git. And then with a normal form tag, we'll have a closed form tag as well. Inside of this, let's say, let's make an input field, we'll say input type equals text, name equals search term. And we can maybe put a label behind here and fix a little grammar over here. Now, a label typically corresponds with an input field, and it uses the for attribute of the label to match up with an ID attribute of the input type. So we'll go ahead and add ID equals search term. And then you'll see our red line goes away on the right. Next, we simply need a submit button. And at this point, our form looks good. If we take a look at what we've created so far, here's what we have that's new, the search box up above. Now, of course, I can type in something like Eastern or Eastern Redbud hit search, and we'll find that nothing happens yet because we have not yet created this endpoint. But nonetheless, see what we got. We got a 404, which you probably know by now means not found because the endpoint doesn't exist. Now, take a look up at the URL. You see a plants endpoint, and we're using the get method here, so the form values are going to appear in the URL. So search term equals Eastern, and then submit, our submit button actually had a value of zero, so you see submit equals zero. So let's set up an endpoint to handle this now. We'll navigate to our controller. Let's go down towards the bottom, and we'll do a, I'll tell you what, we can do a git mapping. Inside the parens of the git mapping, we need to use the same plants endpoint that we defined in our HTML page, so plants, just like so. And then, for the moment, we'll say public response entity, and then search plants. To satisfy the return type, we'll simply say return new response entity. And then we'll return the OK status. Now, here's where the real magic comes in, though, because we want to get the value of that search term from our URL. Remember, the search term is what you see up here in the URL, so lowercase search term except uppercase T. We can use an at request param annotation to retrieve that, and this gives us a lot of nice attributes. So request param, let's say value equals search term. Again, we want to use the same spelling and capitalization as before. Required, we can say, do we, do we require that this is populated so that we can process this page? Let's start with required equals false. Now, if it's not required, a lot of times you want to give it a default value. So let's say default value. Let's just say none for the moment. We can change that to something else later. Now, after all of this in the parentheses, we say string search term. And what is that? Well, think of a common method where we have a method name, which here is search plans, a return type, which is response entity, an access modifier, which is public here. And then we will typically have a series of parameter variables, which is what gets passed into the method. And this is simply a parameter variable, and the at request param annotation is describing this parameter value variable. It says it will be populated from the search term that's passed in through our URL. That's not a required term. Let me fix my grammar there. 
and the default value is none if the value is not passed in. One other correction, and this is where I love red lines, that false should not be in quotes, so now that's fixed. Now, what we can do at the moment, since we don't have anything in the service or the DAO to handle this, is we can simply set a breakpoint, and we'll just make a dummy breakpoint here. We'll say string new search term equals search term plus boom, boom. This line isn't adding any value. It's simply a place where we can set a breakpoint, just like so. Let's restart and watch what happens. I return to our home page and I click search. We see then IntelliJ lights up in orange to indicate that the breakpoint is hit. So I'm going to go ahead and just choose F8. And if we mouse over either new search term or even the search term that was passed in, you'll notice it contains the value Eastern. I'll go ahead and choose F9 to tell that to continue. And you notice once again, the value Eastern. Now we also had this return HTTP status OK. So while you notice there's no content here, we're also not getting an error. Let's take a look at a few other permutations of this annotation. I'm going to take off the breakpoint for a moment just so that we can see what happens when we change a few variables. Let's go ahead and change this to required equals true, and then I'll restart the application. Now let's go ahead and submit it, but without anything in the search box. Now I did go ahead and put the breakpoint on for just a moment because I wanted to show you the behavior that would happen. Note that if we don't pass anything in and we have required equals true, everything is still going to work OK. And the search term is going to have what value? The string none, which is what we defined as the default value up above. So if I go ahead and choose F9, we'll notice that the page comes back, no problem. Now what if we don't specify a default value, but we keep that required equals true? Let's try that, and I'll go ahead and restart. Let's try it this time without a search term. Now you'll notice it still gives us an OK and a blank page. It hasn't given us an error, but that's because we still have the search term parameter up in the URL, and it's essentially defaulting it to empty string. Let's remove that search term parameter entirely and just leave the other one there. That one really is not relevant. Now you notice if I remove the entire name value pair, in other words, even just the name part of that, now we're going to get a 400 error bad request. Now that's very curious because you notice the method I have only has one return type and that is an HTTP status OK, which is a 200. But here we got a 400 back and how's that possible? Well, it checks for this required validation before it even enters the method. And if something is required true and that name doesn't exist in the URL, then it fails it back with the 400 before it even gets here. So you see that 400 versus 200 logic is essentially automatically baked in with this required equals true. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop the application. I'm also going to put this back to how it used to be because I liked it better with uh, default value equals none and, and so on and so forth like that. We can even take out the, that debug line that we have now. I'm going to do something that I typically don't recommend doing, but it's just temporary, and that's commenting out code. Uh, it's okay provided that I don't actually commit this to version control. It's just temporary. I'll take it out before I do a commit. Reason I want to do this is I want to consider a different way that we can use this request param. You see, it worked well here where we knew what our parameters already are. But what if we have a page like this that's a rather big form that has a whole bunch of different boxes? And more importantly, maybe some of these boxes vary. Maybe it's something like a table where we could have an infinite number of rows. We need something a bit more flexible. And for that, we can use a different signature for request param. Watch as I take out all of the parameters we've put in here, including the parameter variable for our method. I'm just going to say request param, and then I'm going to say map string comma string. Do you remember our discussion of hash maps before? Uh, hopefully this will make a little bit of sense here. Uh, a map is essentially a key value pair and a hash map is using hash codes to determine the location of that key. But nonetheless, let's, we still need to give this a parameter name. So we're going to say request params. Now take a look at what's going on here. Request param annotation, we know that's going to pull name value pairs out of the URL and populate our parameter variables in this method. But take a look at what our parameter variable is. The parameter variable is named request params and it's of type map string comma string. 
so string key, string value. What this is going to give to us is all of the name value pairs from the URL. The name will be the key, the value will be the value. So once again, let me just put on a little breakpoint line that I can do here. We'll say request params.size and save that into in params. And then just for fun, let's try to pull one parameter out explicitly. Let's say request params.get. Now we can still use the same type of logic up above because we know that we're trying to get a value that's attached to the search term name. So we simply say string search value equals request params.get search term. So with that, the search value is essentially what was in this, let me scroll to the right a bit, in the search term parameter up above. So essentially we've taken this method above, we've recreated it down below, but in a little more flexible way, because this time we're getting all URL parameters. Now we do have to jump through a couple of extra hoops here because we get all parameters and then we find the one we want. But nonetheless, you just see this is a different way of using that request param term. So I snap a breakpoint, I save, and then we'll go ahead and start this in the debugger once again. We'll return back to our home page, and this time we'll, we'll put Eastern in the search box and hit search. A breakpoint hits, we're not surprised about that. And we simply choose F8 and F8 again. And what's our search value? Search value is Eastern. So you see we were able to get that out of the URL as we were before. But now here's an interesting thing. Let's look at request params. For request params, we have two values. Search term is Eastern and then submit equals zero. That's our submit button. Let's see what happens when we pass in some more values and we can do this manually. So I go back to my page, we see search, team equal, search term equals Eastern, submit equals zero, latitude equals 39.74, and I'm just making things up at the moment. Oh, sorry. We, what, and if you're not familiar with URL syntax, we have our endpoint and then a question mark starts the name value pairs. And then each name value pair after that is separated by an ampersand. So that's how I'm putting together a list of name value pairs. Start with a question mark, ampersand delimiter. So latitude 3974, longitude minus uh, equals minus 84.51, so on and so forth. So notice I have four name value pairs. Plant, I'm sorry, search term Eastern, submit zero, latitude 3974, longitude minus 8451. Watch what happens when I press enter and we take a look in our debugger. Choose F8 and let's look at our request params parameter again. Now you see that it is a hash map with the size of four. So search term is Eastern, submit is zero, latitude 3974, longitude 8451. I go ahead and let it continue. And we know now that this hash map approach is a way that we can accommodate a varying number of name value pairs up here in the header. So that's a good demo, but we also know that we can use this request body annotation to just populate a DTO all at once. And that's what I prefer. So I'm now that I've shown this demo, I'm going to go ahead, remove this endpoint, re-enable the other endpoint, and then I can commit and push to version control. So I hope this video has been helpful. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.